Tom Verducci, who joins me here now on The Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Tom? I am well. How are you, Rich? I'm doing great. And so how, how much arm twisting of Vince Scully's did you have to do <laughs> to get him to sit yeah, down? Yeah, we worked for a while on it. Um, he actually gave me a couple of dates. One was in spring training. He made a short trip there. But obviously, I wanted to get it done in L.A., um, but yeah, I mean, you know, this guy does not like attention. And what he told me was he was not going to do any other on camera interviews. So uh, that was a real treat for me personally and professionally. And uh, of this, the, the moments in the piece that were just so incredible is just talking about how, you know, he's talking about, let's, for instance, you know, Trace Thompson, whose brother Clay is playing in the Western Conference Finals right now, a millennial. And then when he first broke in, the manager of the Dodgers was born in the, the late 1800s. You know, I mean, so <laughs> this guy has to say generations that he spanned is truly uh, an understatement when you think about it. It's Tom. amazing. Yeah. Stan Katz and the Dodgers president told me a story about how Stan was complaining. Nobody knows how to execute a rundown in the major leagues. And Stan learned how to do that by reading Branch Rickey's book. Uh, to which Vin replied, well, yeah, uh, Branch told me how to do a rundown. <laughs> Branch Rickey broke into the big leagues, broke into the big leagues in 1905. I mean, so Vin is just this string that connects generation upon generation over more than a century of baseball. It's crazy to think how much history he has seen firsthand uh, and then how much he connects through all these generations. And we will never see anybody like him again, right, Tom? I know no, we no. Listen, He's the best there is, so you're talking about the greatest of all time, but also the way he does a game. I mean, Ben is not just his own color man and play-by-play -play man. He's actually the producer and director of the broadcast. You'll actually hear him sometimes doing a game saying, and if we can get another look at that swing, and, of course, they'll show the, another replay of that swing. Uh, nobody else has the latitude or the skill to do a game the way that Vin does it. And no, we won't see it again. And not just that, though. We'll never see a broadcast uh, company or unit allow the latitude for a broadcaster to, A, call a game by himself or herself ever again. We'll never see that. And we also won't see what sometimes you see with Vin now, uh, where they give him a little bit of space at the top of an inning or, or the middle of an inning to just spin a yarn, just to turn around the camera, just go, you just talk for 45 seconds. Normally, we're we, we in this business now, Tom. You know, we're being told to keep it short, wrap, get get going, and no. we'll never see anything like that with Vin ever again. You're ever. absolutely right, and there's, uh, to me, there's a little bit of sadness in that. Uh, first of all, you know, just selfishly, I want to hear Vin keep calling games. But second of all, that was the way broadcasting originally began. You know, especially on radio before we had TV. Those guys calling games were your friends. Uh, and I don't use that word lightly because you spent so much time with them and they spoke to you like a friend. And that is Ben Scully, where, as you said, they'll give him room to tell a story, even make a little commentary, the way you would tell a friend a story. Yeah. And, yeah, everything today, as you know, is let's go faster and faster. Attention spans get shorter and shorter. I think we've gone too far with that because I do think there are times in our lives where we do want to slow it down and hear a good story that we can then pass on to somebody else. Hey, this is what Vin said last night. Did you hear what Vin said last night? And there's just not really the room to do that anymore. Tom Verducci, Sports Illustrated, MLB Network, Fox. My gosh, you can't even uh, keep track of you anymore. Uh, joining me here <laughs> on the Rich Eisen Show. So we're going to hear from Major League Baseball and Joe Torre today about the Odor Batista mess? What do you think? Yeah, I think so. Barring something that is just unforeseen, um, I think you will see, you know, multiple disciplines handed out. Obviously, we're looking at Odor getting the longest one. Typically, if you want to go by precedent, when punches are thrown on the field, you're talking about anywhere around seven to nine games. It'll be interesting to see what Bautista gets, what Matt Bush gets. Uh, and the two managers, uh, I suspect, also will be disciplined. Well, I mean, Gibbons, for, he, he better be disciplined because <laughs> if you're going to pop Bryce Harper for a game for coming out of the tunnel or, or not leaving in a timely manner so he could go out and celebrate the next pitch, essentially, uh, then the manager who comes out after five innings of, of cooling his heels should get popped for that, don't you think, Tom? No question about that. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, it's all, there's a precedent there, as you said. You don't want this thing to continue. 
But you think Gibbons got thrown out of another game? He's got a streak going on here now, a two-game ejection streak. There, it's almost like, <laughs> what do you call that, an iron jaw, an iron mouth? I mean, I don't know what you call that. The you Bobby know. Cox Award. That's true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Oh, man. So how do you think this is landing at Major League Baseball? How do you think they view this? Um, well, I, I think if you injected them with truth serum, it, it, it doesn't bother them. A lot of people have been talking about baseball during the NBA playoffs, but it's really not for the right reasons. I mean, listen, I, we all want to see the game, and I enjoy watching the game played with a lot of emotion. There's no doubt about it. But you can't have people settling arguments with their fists in the middle of a baseball field. I don't care how entertaining people it is and how cool it is to pass along the videos and, you know, to break it down like it's a boxing match and all that stuff. I, I get the attraction of it. But if you're running a sport, you just can't have mayhem on your field where people are taking justice literally into their own hands. So I, I think that's what really concerns Joe Torre, the people in the front office. And listen, baseball has done a really good job, you know, in the last, I want to say decade or so. It's very rare that we do see these on-field incidents. So I don't think it's any part of a big trend or anything. This is a very specific circumstance where the Rangers, just they had enough of Jose Bautista, even before the bat slip last year, but that certainly put them over the top. Uh, and it was a day that was a long day in coming because they were just waiting to take retribution. Yeah, I know, but that's what the Blue Jays took uh, offense to, and that's maybe why Bautista slid late. Is that hey, listen, he I don't, thought? I don't blame uh, the uh, John Gibbons and the Blue Jays for saying, "Man, you had I don't even know how many bats it was, but seven games. You waited literally to his last at bat against your team in the regular season, the last possible at bat you could take, and then you hit him. I mean, what is that? Why don't you just hit him the first time you see him? I, I understand that, but you know, it's getting back to these unwritten rules. Yeah, I know, I mean, but nobody... while we're no, but while we're on that though, well, what's the big deal though, right? Because if you are going to pop him the first time. Uh, then, then what? Then, then you respect them. Then you tip your cap. All right, the first chance you had, you you got them. As opposed to, we don't respect you because you waited so long. You're not giving us a chance to retaliate, even though the concept of hitting him in the first place with the unwritten rule is it makes you even. That's where I don't yeah, understand I'm it, Tom. I'm on that, by the way. There's no like guidebook and said, oh my goodness, they violated the guidebook by waiting till the seventh game to hit him. And the Blue Jays got retribution anyway. They hit fielder the next inning, and they did it exactly the way it's been done for 100 years. Hit him in a place where it really doesn't hurt. You can't get out of the way. Everybody knows what happened. And then you move on. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I understand why the Blue Jays are upset because they think that Rangers should have acted a certain way. But that's silly, too. It is. The whole thing is nuts. But if, yeah. if I had to set an over-under line on the Odor suspension, what, do you, what would you set it at right now, Tom? I would put it at uh, at eight. I think it might have been more, but for the fact that Bautista was in an offensive posture when Odor popped him, you know, and it was just completely a sucker punch. I think it would have been longer. Uh, I don't think Bautista was preparing to throw a punch. If you look at the video, he did not clench his fist. He was just kind of getting a, uh, I guess, a defensive posture and getting ready for something to happen. Uh, something did happen. <laughs> Uh, so I think that mitigates the suspension of being longer. So I would say about eight games. And in all your time of covering baseball, have you ever seen a game where both managers, both bench coaches, and a first base coach were all ejected over the span of the nine innings? I, I, I don't recall anything like that. I don't recall that. I mean, obviously I've seen worse brawls in terms of the uh, how long it went on and how many people got involved. But, no, in terms of those guys you'd mentioned, they're all thrown out, haven't seen one like that. And it's rare to see a punch landed so cleanly. I guess you go back to Ray Knight in 86 against the Reds. Mm. But that's rare to see a uh, in baseball, anyway, a punch lands so cleanly. Well, boxing, too, in this day and age, Tom. <laughs> let's, let's, let's call it out as we You're see right it. You're right about that. Uh, We've seen some boxing matches where we kept waiting for a shot like that and never got it. Exactly. Uh, While well, I have you on the phone, uh, the firing of Freddie Gonzalez, uh, did the Braves have just seen too much at this point in time? Were they hoping that he could turn it around because of all the kids that they had saddled him with? What was their mindset here? Tom. Yeah, I know a lot of people are going to say, listen, it's not fair because no one could win with that team. And it's true. It's obviously they're rebuilding. Uh, they've stripped it just about all the way down. But it's more about now growing those young players and having a manager who that group can grow with, a guy who can teach them. Um, I guess they made the determination, not so much on wins and losses, but Freddie wasn't that guy 
to grow with this team. Now, who that manager is going to be, whether it's Medicare is is that guy long term, uh, or they could reach out to someone like Mark DeRosa, who I think someday is really going to make a really good manager. Uh, it might be a good situation for Mark to get into a growing team where he has learn, time to learn on the job. But I think it's more about uh, getting the right guy for the next five years than it is wins and losses the first six weeks. And do you think Lincecum winds up an angel when it's all said and done? You know, I do. I thought he would wind up in the National League. I, I think, obviously, his stuff has been short now for a good four or five years. And if, if I were a pitcher and my stuff is shortening up, I'd rather be in the National League than the American League. Uh, although the National League now, it seems like they have the, the better teams. The elite teams are in the National League. But Timmy, you know, he had that hip surgery, and I, I would caution not to expect too much out of him. But I do think this, Tim Lincecum is a really competitive guy. And whatever he's got left, the Angels are going to get that out of him. I'm sure he's worked really hard just to get back to this point. Tom, thanks for the call. Great piece on Vince Scully. I'd love to have you back as soon as possible. Anytime, Rich. My pleasure. Thanks Thank for you, having you me. You bet. That's Tom Verducci. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.